Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I'm talking about local masking. It's a new feature in Luminar AI and it's effectively replaced the functionality of layers. Now it's not exactly the same and you cannot do everything that you could do with layers with local masking. However, it's a very powerful replacement and I think uh, hopefully this video will give you some ideas about how you can use local masking to edit a photo. So I thought it would be an interesting challenge to edit a photo completely with local masks and nothing else. So that's what I'm doing. Here's the photo. And the only thing I've done to this photo is remove a spot that's in the upper left. So if I do a before and after, you can see a spot way up in that upper left corner and after no other changes to the photo. So I'm in the local masking tool. I'm gonna click add and I'm gonna use basic. I'm only gonna use basic local masks. I don't need a texture on this landscape. And the first thing I'm gonna do is increase contrast a little bit. I'm gonna go about 17 or 18. I'm gonna pull the highlights down and maybe something about like that. And I'm gonna bump up the shadows. I'm gonna go about a 38 or so. So pretty simple and straightforward. And I'm not gonna mask, even though it's a local masking tool, you can apply these and then not mask them in. So all these edits I just applied, which are, took me from that to that are global. I didn't mess them in and I'm not going to. So just keep in mind, you can use these local masks across the entire photo if you want to. All it requires is you not to mask in those edits. So I'm gonna get another local mask and get started on my second one. Now in this case, I'm gonna warm it up. I'm gonna do about a positive 30 or so. I'm gonna increase the exposure a little bit as well. I'm gonna to go to about 0 .64, 0.65, something like that. Contrast is gonna go up by about 10. Highlights are coming down about a 17 or 18. And vibrance is going up about 20. Now, uh, let me get that in place. Now this, I am gonna mask. I'm gonna get a gradient mask. And all I really wanna do is apply all those edits that I just made to the lower portion of the photo. So. I gradient mask them in. You can see how that's applied. If you wanna check your mask, you can hit the forward slash key. There it is, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna hit enter. And basically I've just made all those changes to the bottom of the photo. As you can see, there's the before and the after. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna add a new basic mask. And this time I'm gonna work on the top of the photo. Warmth goes up about a 35 or so, 36. And the exposure comes up a little bit as well. Tiny bit of contrast is gonna be added and a slight reduction in highlights. Shadows are going up as well. I'm going to mid 40s here and I'm gonna do negative structure because this is gonna be for the sky and I just kinda of like that soft sky look. And lastly, vibrance is also going up. I wanna keep it kinda of similar to what I did in the bottom of the photo because of course I want it to match. And then of course, I'm gonna get a gradient mask and here I'm just gonna drag this down across the sky, something about like that. And so again, check your mask, forward slash. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna turn that off, or excuse me, just close that tool. And if I look at the before, there it is before. And if you look at the top of the photo, you can see the impact that that change has had. And there we go. So, so far, there's my base photo and here's my current state. And that's one basic mask globally, one basic mask for the bottom and a second basic mask, uh, both gradients, I should say, for the top. But now here's where I'm gonna start using different masks to target specific areas of the photo. And I think that's one of the things that's so powerful about this. It's, you know, it's useful to use a gradient mask and cover a wide area, but using brush mask and radial mask can really help you target specific things. That's where we're gonna start on now. Okay, I'm gonna start with an exposure increase, a little bit like that, and a little bit of structure as well. And that's gonna be about a 25, 27, something like that. And what I wanna do here is I'm on paint mask and I just wanna paint this in. So I'm gonna right bracket key to make it a little bit bigger and I'm just gonna paint the edit I just did, which is an increase in structure and an increase in exposure. And I'm just gonna paint it in across the land mass. And I'm gonna come in here and do that in the bottom as well. And that should just about cover me. Let me um, look at that. There you go, you can kinda of see what's happened there. So if I turn this tool off, there it is before, a little bit darker, a little less crispy in the landmass in the distance, as well as the foreground grass. And you can see the after, it's a little bit brighter and a little bit more detailed because of that increase in structure. So I think that really helped. Now I wanna do something else. I'm gonna add a new basic mask. And this time I'm gonna add a little bit of warmth. I'm gonna go like mid forties or so, but I don't want that across the entire photo. So once again, I'm gonna get a mask, but this time it's gonna be a radial and I'm gonna click the right side to get that one. And all I wanna do is basically warm up this section of land here because I wanna uh, show a little bit more like the sun is hitting it. 
Um, there we go, something about like that, and then maybe scoot it over, whoa, just scoot that over a little bit like that. And all I've done is basically, if I turn this off, you can see it's a little bit cooler there in that land, that's the distant landmass, and afterwards it's a little bit warmer. All I'm trying to do is target that area, which you can see uh, here, and if I, again, turn on the mask view, you can see where my mask is being applied. Now, I actually think I might expand that a little bit, maybe a little bit more like that. Let me turn that off. But basically, I wanna show some of that sunlight that's coming from the left side of the frame, kind of hitting that distant land. So if I turn that off, you can see the before, and then when I turn it back on, you can see the after, just a little bit warmer. In fact, I might even go a tiny bit more. I don't wanna to go too much like that to where it really stands out. I just wanna pop a little bit more of a light and warmth over there in that section of land, as I said, to illustrate kind of how the sun setting over there might be hitting uh, that, that piece of land. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go get another radial mask, and this time I'm gonna go ahead and put the radial mask in first. You can do it either way. I tend to often do my edits and then apply the mask, but in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the radial mask, and what I wanna do here is kind of similar to what I did over on that land mask, and I just wanna pop the warmth and the sunlight over here with another radial mask. So something about like that, now I wanna come over here, I wanna drag the warmth up. I'm gonna go mid 50s or so. I'm also gonna give a little bit of saturation, so maybe like a 12 or 13, something like that, and a little bit of vibrance as well. And basically what I'm trying to do, and I'm gonna expand this area a little bit, I'm just popping that sunset look over there. So if I show you my mask, basically the edits I just made, the warmth, the saturation, the vibrance, they're hitting that section of the photo. So it's me just targeting that area to warm it up a little bit because that is the sun, the last kind of gasp of sunlight kind of passing uh, through and I wanted to pop that a little bit. So there it is before, definitely tamer, not nearly as vibrant and after, much warmer, more saturated, things like that. Just trying to pop that section of the photo and you can target those areas nicely with a radial mask. Okay, now I'm gonna come back and I wanna target the pond itself. And this time I wanna do some negative structure. I just like that a lot on water. And it defaults to the brush mask, so I'm just gonna increase that a little bit. And all I'm gonna do is paint this negative structure into the pond because all I wanna do is just soften up the look of that water and create a little bit softer look and a little bit more of a kind of a, almost like a long exposure. I just like blurred soft water, kind of like I do with skies. But I did this now and separately because I wanted to target it specifically with a brush. So if I show you that, let me hit the forward slash key. There it is. The beginning down here, this second basic mask, I did a gradient across the entire bottom, but I did more things. I worked on like the exposure and contrast and highlights and shadows. It wasn't appropriate for me to include the negative structure there because I didn't want to cover the entire bottom of the photo. I wanted more structure in the grass, which I did separately with the brush. And now I wanted to come back and do less structure here in the water to soften that up and give it a little bit softer feel. So if I turn this off, you can see the before, a little bit more texture in the water, a little bit of ripples, things like that. And then the after, just a little bit softer. So we've come a long way, to be honest. There it is before we've done anything, and there it is now. And we've got basically seven different local masks here. Remember, the first one was global. The next six were all targeted for specific things and specific parts of the photo, which I love about it. And what I often find myself doing is coming back with one last basic mask. And this one is, once again, just going to be applied globally. It's kind of what I consider the finishing touch. And in this case, I'm going to start with about a 25 in contrast. I'm gonna take the highlights down a little bit, like at 13 or so, but I'm gonna bump up the shadows because that added contrast does create a little bit more darkness in the photo, and I wanna pull back some of the shadows so that I don't lose visibility. So I think I'll go low 20s there. And I wanna add a little bit more warmth overall to the photo. It's very blue, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that, and I love my blues, but this is a sunset. I wanna give a little bit more warm feel. So this is, again, just kind of a final touch-up. And I think maybe something about like that looks kind of nice. It pulls back some of the blue, but there's still plenty of blue, but it gives a little bit more warmth overall. So if I turn off this basic mask, which again, it's my final one, therefore I kind of treat it as a, well, I don't treat it, it is a global mask because I'm not applying it with a mask anywhere in the photo. So this, these are global edits, but there it is. You can see the overall warmth of the photo has changed. There it is cooler. And then when I turn it back on, there it is overall warmer. It helps pop a little bit more of that sunlight over there warms up the entire photo, a little bit of contrast, things like that. But that's really it, that's my entire edit. So let me show you the before, there it is before we did anything, and that's the current state. 
And let me do this sliding window here. You can see we came quite a long way. And that's really the power of local masks and why I'm enjoying them so much because you can do an entire edit of a photo without ever using any of the other tools. You can just use these basic local masks and frankly, get a whole lot done. So one more time, there's the full edit left to right. Did a lot of different things, targeted specific areas, and that's what's so great about local masking. Whether it's a brush, a radial, or a gradient, you can target areas, apply those edits accordingly, and come out with a finished photo that you're proud of. That's how I use it. That's a, uh, a tour, if you will, of using local mask to target specific areas, and I just wanted to illustrate that you can fully edit a photo without doing anything else except local masking. Hope it helps my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching. You guys take care of yourselves out there. Have fun editing. I'll see you later and adios.